Zach, nice to meet you in pleasure online. To you too, bro. How you doing? It's a pleasure to have you on the channel. Um, and yeah, you're the first guest of Talking Drums. Oh, sweet. This is like a podcast thing? <laughs> oh, I think so. Basically, I just, I came from my father's nutsack. Yeah. And um, started playing the drum as soon as possible. Uh, yeah, really, I just wanted to say nutsack in your YouTube video, so. Bruh. I'll keep that in. I promise. <laughs> no, I don't want to get. I don't want to get you with that low CPM. No. Don't worry. I'm. I'm. I'm all <laughs> for monetization. So, how did you get into drums? How did you discover the drums? And how old were you? It's actually funny. A funny, funny story that uh, no one really believes. Well, other than my mom, because I told her years later, and she's like, "How do you remember that?" Yeah, I, I remember sitting in my mom's uh, lap when I was in diapers at a, one of my dad's concerts because my dad was in a uh, rock band. He played guitar. All right. Yeah, my dad plays guitar yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And, um, you know, I was sitting in my mom's lap, probably shit in my pants. You know, I was in diapers. My dad's band was playing like this festival, like this 4th of July festival in, uh, in Georgia. You know? Yeah. And um, I don't know. I just remember hearing them drums come in. Boom, boom. Hit me in the chest. I probably shit my diapers. I yeah. Like, I wanted to do that. I didn't say that. I don't know if I could talk, but I know I, I wanted to do that and you know, play the drums. So that's awesome. So when did you first play a drum set? Play a drum set? Drum set? Yeah. Dude, probably when I was like ten or twelve because we, you know, we didn't. We're pretty broke. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't afford it. But you know, I always bang on pots. You know, just like everyone, like all the drummers banging on pots and pans. Yeah, nice. Uh, I was always very. Um, at first, it wasn't so much about the um, like the drum, like playing drums, like the musical side of it. It was more so like the texture of like the actual feeling of the drum and hitting the instrument itself. Yeah. It, I don't know why it just it was like the most satisfying thing to me to take a stick yeah. and hit a drum head and hear it and watch it bounce back up. It's just like, oh, you know, that was like my child's toy, right? You know, yeah. kids like, like their toy trucks and stuff. My toy just happened to be a drum. I was like, holy shit, this is so satisfying. Nice. I got really into like the musical side of it. I tried to get better. I wanted to sound good. And um, at first rhythms was, rhythm itself like really fascinated me, you know? Um, like just hearing a train go by, like the Hearing, hearing shit, hearing like metal shit fall. I'm just like, just, da -da 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 -da. I'm like, dang. It's nice. So, so what was your first drum kit? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was like one of those kid sets. Uh, I, I, I don't remember the brand, but it was like one of those kid sets. I broke it in like two days. I, I remember my first real drum set, like a, a non kid drum set, was a, a Mapex my dad had got for me at um, Music and Arts in North Carolina, I think. <laughs> was it a Mapex Tornado by any chance? Because that's what I got. I'm not quite sure. I, 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 could, I couldn't tell you. It was like Mapex. It was silver. It was ugly as hell, but I loved it. I beat the hell out of that thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I still got the same Mapex from when I was like um, maybe 13. So first, the first one I got was an Elisis electric kit, and then I sold that on eBay because uh, I thought, yeah. you know, I whacked the plastic, and I was like, what the, what the hell is this, you know? <laughs> So then yeah, I yeah, sold it on eBay. Real... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then I got that Mapex and that's still the kit I've got today. Nice. So anyway, on the topic of gear, I have this. Okay. What do you think of this? That looks pretty ass, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I feel like you could <laughs> crack that in like a day or two. What, so first of all, do you know what it is? Is that a China symbol? Yeah, but I made it out of a crash symbol. No way. Have yeah. you like drilled it? Yeah, yeah. So this was the original. I'll get a picture. So this was the video. Um, this is the video that's going to go up before this one. Uh -huh. And basically, I took. What is that? What is that metal? That's like that's like one of those symbols you get from those little kid drum sets. It's like. the one that came with the Mapex. So this is what it looked like. Oh. And then drilled holes in it, and then just like whacked it with a hammer, basically. And it sounds yeah. pretty good. Listen. I bet it does actually. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's cool. 
Thanks. Yeah, I also made my yeah, own. I, uh, I, I, um, I drilled. I drilled some holes on this symbol. Oh, nice. And um, because I wanted to make like a high a seventeen inch hi hat, so I put these two together. These two seventeen. Yeah. But it was like too um too thick, like too too. What, what am I looking? Too dark, too warm. I, I need some a little bit of uh, you know, brightness to it. So I drilled some holes, for like a faster attack, and it doesn't sound that bad. I have, actually have a. I think I did a video on it. A while back, nice. So. Yeah, I wasn't expecting. I just basically wanted to drill some holes because I wanted one of those like cool effect symbols. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't yeah. expect it to actually change the sound, but it made it. It's actually made it sound less washy. So it sounded like complete shit beforehand. Yeah, exactly. And, um, exactly. It really actually nice. sounded pretty decent. Yeah, nice. But yeah, yeah. I also I like what you've done to it. it I'm sure it certainly sounds better than how it was packaged. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so I also made my own uh, clap stack. Oh, oh! I saw that video you did. Did you? I saw that video. Yeah, yeah. Nice. How's yeah, the crap stack. For you? The crap stack. Yeah. <laughs> Call it the crap stack. That's pretty funny. Have you, have yeah, you seen these these smack stacks, bro? They're oh, they're so nice. That's why I made it because I couldn't afford one. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Is... So good. It's, it sounds so incredible. Yeah. Like the crap stack can sound like a clap if you get it just right at the perfect tightness. Mm -hmm. But that one just sounds like. I mean, I made it because I couldn't afford one of those, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, back to the drumming background story. Yeah, Did yeah. you have lessons when you were learning to play drums, or...? No. Well, I, I, did, I did band in school, right? Right. right. Uh, but that was all uh, classical studies, you know? We didn't have a jazz band. We didn't really... Yeah. Yeah. Um, our school was uh, very broke. <laughs> So we, they only gave, gave us what they could afford, and it was uh, so like after school curriculum that wasn't a, a thing at my school. So you did learn like the rudiments and stuff at school. Oh yeah, so a very so like sixth grade. What's that like twelve, eleven? Nice very early on, and that I like to this day I still tell like my students and everyone who asks, everyone who cares to ask, like the classical thing is a, is a huge is a really huge and solid foundation for me it's how i got my hands yeah yeah got my hands right basically and that's really cool because like in england we don't have like marching band or anything like that so mm -hmm. i didn't know what rudiments were until i was in the school jazz band and there was a drummer i just joined a uh, secondary school which i i don't know what school it is in the states but i was um probably 13 at the time and there was this guy who was probably 16 just about to leave to next school and um, he was like, can you do paradiddles? And I was like, what, what the fuck are those? <laughs> you know, because I thought I could play, you know, basic beats and stuff. Yeah. And I thought I was basically the best drummer ever, right? Mm -hmm. And then I saw these paradiddles and I was like, I just couldn't do it. So when you were learning to play the drums, what is the thing that you struggled the most with? The thing I struggled the most with learning to play drums. That's a good question. Um, you mean like in the early days or now? <laughs> uh, both. I mean, back in the day, for example, my bass drum was so bad like my ankle was so sloppy i couldn't play anything remotely close to each other on the bass drum yeah. um so that that was definitely what it was for me yeah okay well yeah uh my yeah my foot's never i've never had like a huge issue with my foot i always just kind of thought and i think this is one of the benefits of um being self-taught is like is like you're not you don't restrict yourself to one way of thinking right and um, yeah. for me, like with the foot, um, it wasn't until I got to like high school, I guess, and I was getting really into drums. So I was looking at all these YouTube videos and stuff, or, uh, you know, just of, of some of my favorite drummers play. And um, they were talking about like different techniques, like heel up, heel down. Um, yeah. I don't know, the, the, the swivel thing. I forgot what that's called. The slide technique. Yeah, slide technique. Yeah, that's what I do now. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, whoa, I didn't know these were things. I just kicked the damn thing. You yeah. know? <laughs> it, it wasn't until I I was playing a song, actually, with a, with some friends of mine. It was, like, really freaking fast. And it was like, yo, like, this is just what the song calls for. It was, like, something like, a, I forgot. I don't know how old it was, but we were playing some, some groove like this. You know what I'm saying? But it was like... Just fucking around and um that's when i first knew that's when i that's when i first 
realized like, oh, my foot can do that. <laughs> so who are your favorite drummers and biggest influences when it comes to drumming? My biggest influences are actually non-drummers, like they're um, piano players and, and saxophonists. Michael Brecker is one of them. Gerald Clayton, a pianist. Oscar Peterson, I don't know if you ever heard of that guy. Not only are they influential musically for me, they're just like what they've done for, for music. It's just, it's so amazing. Miles, obviously, Miles. Um, but yeah, sorry. So dr drum wise, though, drum yeah. wise, because you know, this yeah. is a drum channel. You know, what I'm of saying? course. Yeah. Uh, you got Tony. You know, Tony. Uh, Elvin. I, I almost licked Elvin's blood at the PASIC event. I was tempted. I didn't lick, I didn't actually lick it, but <laughs> there was a kit he had and there was blood on his kit. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I saw played. on your story. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I was like, "Holy crap! That's Elba Jones. Blood. That's pretty sick. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of nasty. Not gonna lie, but like, kind of sick too. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I get that. Yeah. Nice. Um, more, more, more modern guys. Eric Carlin is a huge one for me. Uh, Chris Dave, huge one for me. You heard of these? You better get hip. <laughs> you got to get hip. Who did yeah, who are some drummers you like? I mean, the thing is for me, like when I started playing drums, I didn't know anything about drummers. I just liked playing music. So I would listen to rock music and I would not know who played it yeah. and just play along yeah. to it. And then it wasn't until I started looking on the internet when I saw like really good drummers. The people who really started opening my eyes were like people like Luke Holland, mm -hmm. Annika Niles, yeah. um, Eric Moore, mm -hmm. um, or oh, Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat as well. Yeah, yeah. But these were the people that kind of showed me that drums was more than just, you know, single strokes and what you hear in most music, you know, on the radio and stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have a similar, similar thing to me. Like when I, because I used to never watch like YouTube, YouTube drummers. Um, at least back then, it was all just like tutorials and stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty boring, right? Like I got on YouTube to be, to, you know, put my legs up and laugh, you know? Yeah, yeah. Pretty boring stuff. But, um, so I, I always would like listen to some of my favorite rec records and, and be like, man, who is that drummer? And because I'm so nosy, I want to learn more about them, you know, and find out That's who their nice. influences are. And... Yeah, maybe I was just lazy. I don't know. <laughs> but I just, uh, um, yeah, I mean, back in the early days, I'd basically just listen to rock music and then I'd like try and find a drum cover on YouTube. Most of the time it was, you know, like Casey Cooper, someone like yeah. that playing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, apart from that, I just didn't really know much about the world of drums it was more just music and what you needed to play for the music so mm -hmm. yeah makes sense makes sense but like i think it could be very uh beneficial you know oh yeah for sure like hear some of these records and be like man like who's this guy and, and check yeah, you're out. gonna have to send me some bro i mean the thing is i was in school jazz band right yeah and all i play was the i know you said it's like the the walk of the dog right yeah 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 yeah, yeah i knew nothing well, about Greg Hutchison said that, not me. Right, right. Yeah. Sorry, I watched your YouTube video about it, but yeah. <laughs> but like, I knew nothing about jazz. I knew nothing about jazz drumming. I just copied what the other guy told me how to play, and that was about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought jazz. I thought jazz was boring. But then I watched people like you playing, and I was like, what the hell? What the fuck? This is incredible. This is incredible. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I think jazz is boring too, particularly uh, standards, bebop, the the spang, spang a lang, you know. Yeah. But that's just when it comes to drum set, that's just my foundation. And I've, um, I've built up off of that. So it seeps into my playing. Like you, like I, I mentioned Elvin earlier, Elvin did all kinds of stuff like this, you know, he's like, now when I'm playing a funk beat, I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What I got from Elvin, bro. That's really cool. No, I mean, yeah. I, if I could yeah. go back and do it all again, I definitely, I definitely study a lot more jazz. Go back when everyone's a kid and they've all got like their thing about them. Mm -hmm. like, some that's people are good, good at sports. Some people are good at, you know, I don't know, art, drawing, and stuff. And I was like, I'm not good at anything. I, I haven't got my thing. And then I discovered the drums, yeah. and you know, that was my thing. You know, so I just stuck with it. Cool. Yeah, same yeah. here, man. That was awesome. my thing. <laughs> exactly right so onto your youtube journey because mm -hmm. you started i saw your first proper video was in like um october 
yeah yeah that so, would have been like so what made you start your youtube channel oh that's another funny story <laughs> I had I just graduated, uh, uh, no, not graduated. I had just failed uni, uh, my final year there. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I always accidentally say graduated because I was so close, you know, one point, bro. One point. Right. A little motherfucker. Anyways, but it's, it's all good. Uh, I had just finished uni. Finished. I just flunked uni. Yeah. And I was working this summer gig at a, an amusement park, like playing drums. Um, because it was just something to do over the summer and, um, you know, free, free housing and all the, all this stuff, you know, yeah. it was just, it, it was fun. And, um, I was preparing to go on a, a, a different contract, um, performing at events and stuff in Asia for like a few months, you know, and, um, and then COVID happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> COVID happened. And. This is why it's very important to be um, positive, you know, because it, it, because I've always been like a, a happy, positive kid growing up, and I, I still am, I think, and you know, I said, you know what, maybe it's not bad, maybe COVID is not that bad, you know, I, yeah, my my little tour thing got canceled, but but let's see. Let me make a let me make a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I've always I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel. You know, yeah. yeah. I think if, if you have a if you have like a clear goal in mind going in to the YouTube game, you know, like a, a clear long term, long term goal or short term goal, like just as long as it's a clear goal. Yeah, you can't go you can't go wrong with starting. Sure. You know, like my clear goal was because you know my contract ended, I wasn't going to be making any money. You know, I was like, okay, maybe I can get like one to two students a week if I post videos. Yeah. You know, I just so happened that I just, I, I my channel like kind of grew really quickly. Nice. So it was quite quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I want to say no, but, and, and um, you know, in reality, it, it was very fast. I mean, it was like two or three years now. Yeah. It took, it took Nathan like 10 years to build, to build his his shit and i'm just one of the lucky ones maybe the algorithm hit, hit me in a good way but um i i also like posted a lot of people told me it was like a, a breath of fresh air in the drumming content scene because like yeah, I, yeah, I, sure. I didn't really i didn't really watch drum videos so i i, I didn't go in there with any influence i just i just came at it with a, okay what type of videos would i personally like to watch and you, you definitely deserve your your quick growth because your videos are great. I mean, you truly yeah. opened my eyes because I thought beforehand, like you could only upload videos if they were like drum covers or something like that, or, you know, like drum yeah, lessons yeah. where they were teaching you a specific song. So like, yeah, you really were a breath of fresh air. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. No problem. I've actually got a, um, I commented on, because I first discovered you when it was your, this drum leg will get you fired from any gig. I first oh. found you from that video. Oh yeah, that tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did a comment saying, this is something like, this is a really great video. I think you're going to, you know, you're going to blow up. Oh, and, wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. That was like two years ago. Oh, wow. On my old channel, you know, doing drum covers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I didn't so, realize that video, would, it has like over a million views now. I had no yeah. idea that that little tutorial would, would do that. I remember learning to play it. Lighting. And being like, wow, this is a really good film. I'd never done the crossovers before. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when I was like, whoa, that is so cool. Dude, those crossovers, man, that, that, those, those are cool. They fuck hard, you know? Yeah, they're really you good. You do them everywhere. You can do it hard. That's fun. Yeah, it's yeah so I easy. think all I played was crossovers after that for like the next few months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's funny. Awesome. So you don't watch or you didn't watch many drumming videos mm -hmm. before it. Do you watch any now? Like what kind of stuff do you watch on YouTube, drumming and outside uh -huh. of drumming? Well, let me start with drumming. I I still watch the same videos I used to when I was a kid, like live performances of my favorite groups playing. Yeah, nice. I like the I like the group thing, you know. Yeah. Right on. And um, I I now watch a lot of guys that I've I've met personally because I just I like them as humans and you know I'm I'm interested to see what they're up to, you know. Yeah. Like Adam Tuminaro, he's a good, he's a great guy. R. David R. Great yeah. guy, um, EMC. I I will admit his channel 
as well as R. David R. I used to watch those a lot because EMC, like before I started YouTube, right? Have you heard of EMC? Yeah, yeah. well, actually, I, I hadn't seen him before you, so you introduced me to him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just like some quirky Marine with a freaking rubber chicken, and he's playing, but like, he's playing the craziest rudimental stuff, right? Yeah. And I, I was really into that because I, I did the high school marching band thing. Yeah. And, um, and R. David R., I was just super into like seeing the different stuff he could build. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's, he's really good. He's got some really nice, um, He's got all like the machinery and all like the knowledge to make yeah. these really, really cool projects. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, um, uh, David Cola. I used to watch him too, because I'm yeah. so inter- I liked his vlogs. I like, I watched watch like in the lifestyle. And yeah. I, I remember watching his, um, his life as a cruise ship drummer. And I was mm-hmm. like, I must've been like 15 at the time. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a cruise ship drummer. Yeah. yeah. I, want, I don't want to pay any rent. I just want to play drums, get paid, travel the world. Mm-hmm. And yeah, 2020 happens. So, so I didn't yeah. think about that anymore. Yeah, it's what it is. Got to stay positive. <laughs> you got to. So what about outside outside of drumming YouTube? What do you watch? A lot of political stuff. I'm not going to lie. Do you? A lot of politics and a lot of uh, philosophical type content. And uh, not not the not the spiritual religion, religious stuff. Like I'm, I'm more so into the art of facts. <laughs> you know yeah. and, and rationality but i i don't want to say though because i'm not trying to get, you know not trying to get uh canceled all right well on the topic of youtube i got to ask you is drums with atom your most favorite youtube channel of all time no actually um oh all right i'm kidding i'm <laughs> kidding dude <laughs> i'm joking as well i'm kidding dude of course dude you're my boy awesome. Awesome. I'm, awesome. I'm on drum. I'm on talking drums. I'm on the first episode. That's such an honor for me. That is true. It's an honor to have you. It's an honor to have you. Yeah. I'm right, sorry. Well, I'm a little sick right now. My voice is. Uh, no, it's no uh, problem. Yeah. No worries at all. So, on the topic of drums of Atom, do you have any advice for me? Because you have 300,000 subscribers. I have 300 subscribers. Mm-hmm. Is there anything I can be doing better? Is there anything I need to improve on? Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Like reaching out to to guys you look up to. You know. Yeah. I try to get them and some videos or like do whatever. Uh, don't do it all for clout or money or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, do it because you actually enjoy it and you will never feel like you're like working. One of my favorite things to do is, is like after a day of filming, one of my favorite things to do is sit down with a glass of whiskey and edit. I love that shit. Yeah. You know, I love nice. editing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's actually the same with me. I just got really into making like cool video edits and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't realize until I started watching my early videos back and I was like, ah, this isn't very good. I need to up the game. And then I kind of got super into like the effects and stuff. Yeah. Doing these fast yeah. cuts. But yeah, yeah, no, I do. I do really like making drumming videos. I just, yeah. I just like making videos. Yeah. And another thing I'll say is, although, you, you know, your, your schedule is going to get more packed. Um, you know, especially if you, you know, when the, co- the quality gets higher and you want to, you want to edit it more, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm actually contemplating on hiring editor right now. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know yet, but, but, um, you know, always try to pri- prioritize that sacred drum time, you and your instrument, because yeah. that's 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 still the the number one thing yeah for sure i'm actually i'm actually on a little bit of a mini break because my mm-hmm. tinnitus has got really bad oh really yeah i mean so you know i went away to croatia and then i came back yeah. um i don't know whether it was the break or not but like i did a video uh, called advice of a drummer with hearing advice from a drummer with hearing damage and like my ears are still ringing from that video wow yeah it's a bit weird. It's weird because I got the uh, I got the low volume cymbals, I got the silent stroke drums, but yeah, my ears are still ringing. So I'm on a little break, just trying to think about it. I had like these mm-hmm. candles go in my ear and try and extract all the oh, stuff wow. in case it was a blockage. Um, yeah. But yeah, hopefully we'll get I'll get back on it soon. I see. Yeah. Dang, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Do you do you? It's all right. Protection? Yeah. So I well, the problem is I don't. The problem I think is I didn't use it at the start. So like I said, I had no clue about pretty much anything apart from just playing drums and having fun. But yeah, yeah now I got the 
earplugs. I just got the Vic Firth headphones. Nice. Yeah, those are um, good. So yeah, I that. Ate mine. Ah damn, Mingus. <laughs> is that again? Yeah, it's Mingus. Where is he at? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I need to get back on that. I'm actually thinking. I'm contemplating an electric drum kit. Really? Yeah. I mean, why are you gonna go to the dark side, man? Come on now. I don't know. I mean. They it's actually have some very good electric drum kits on the market now. They do now, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, back when I had mine, it just felt like, you know, I was hissing plastic. It wasn't the real thing. But these days, they're like, I don't want to say they're better or as good, but mm -hmm. they're better in different ways, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I'm thinking about it purely because of my hearing, but I'm not yeah, sure yet. I mean, yeah, dude, protect your hearing, man. Like, I'm, I'm just giving you shit, but seriously, by all means, protect your hearing. You know, I, I, um, I love working out, right? Like going to the gym and stuff, but there was yeah. one, there's one instance where I, um, I, I, I messed up my hip really bad, you know? So I said, you know what? I care about the longevity of my hip. I'm not squatting for a full month. I didn't squat yeah. for a full month. I, you know, I did what was necessary because if you think about the time frame, a month and the whole time frame, it's just a little blip, a little blip, you know, and it came back hundred yeah, percent sure. and it never hurt since. You know? Awesome. So yeah, it's, it's so it's so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish yeah, do, do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, sure. I wish there was more like when I was playing drums and I was younger, I wish there was more, I guess more stuff online about that kind of thing. Because I, I had no clue at all. But that's mm -hmm. why I made my video the other week just to warn people because it's, yeah. it's a real thing. You know, it's an actual real thing. I thought, I thought the drummers were just gonna go, eh, I'll get over it. And then like their ears would adapt or something. But they're, they're loud. They're very loud. <laughs> It's actually funny. I was actually born with a slight hard of hearing in my left ear. Really? Yeah, yeah very, very slight. Um, but I think it's just enough. I think it's just enough to protect my earring because when I play like raw drums for a while, I don't, I don't get the the ringing in right. my left ear, but I get it in my right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope you figure it out though. Hope you get Thank it. you. Yeah, um, I think it'll be all right. I mean. The thing is, the drums are so quiet now, so I got the silent strokes, I've got the low volume cymbals, mm -hmm. I got the hearing protection. I think it should be all right, but yeah. it's just the ring, especially like when there's no no sound around, I can just hear the ringing. Oh yeah, that's annoying when you're trying to sleep, huh? It's so annoying, bro. I've got I've just gotten used to it, bro. Have you? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, I'll I'll find a way to get, to In, get either back. way that shouldn't be happening, so don't don't you know, don't ignore it. Yeah, true. Anyone watching this, <laughs> make sure to protect your hearing from the start. Yep, yep, exactly. All right, perfect. I think we were talking about hearing protection. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to change the subject, and I've got a question from a subscriber called Hulen. And what's really okay. cool is he said he discovered me from you, and now he likes both of our channels. <laughs> cool. So that's really cool. That but he cool. basically asks, um, so how many hours a day did you practice when drums was just a hobby and before it came a profession of yours um all fucking day man <laughs> like i said it was my toy play all day uh yeah like I, you know i'd get up maybe play a video game in between matches hop on the drums play some yeah you know? uh but when it came to like actual structured pa practice there was a, a phase in my life where dad wanted me to get like a job a real job yeah you know like a teenager or something and i was like okay look dad what if i do this what if i do this what if all day eight hour shifts i just practice <laughs> instead of getting a job would that would that be cool it's like as long as you you know you're actively looking for like you know gigs and stuff a way to earn some money yeah you know, my dad was super super supportive of what i did so if you just saw me um you know, if he saw me getting really into something, he would want me to benefit from it. You know, he didn't want me to waste waste my time, right? Awesome. Like he didn't want me just dicking around on the drums. He said, "Okay, playing a lot of drums. You know, go make something happen with it. You know, make something nice. happen with it." You know? Nice. So um, there was a there was a pit, uh, a phase in my life where I locked myself in in my room and just practice. I had like a real structured practice all day, and then college came. You know, I had classes and stuff, but I still got in at least six hours a day. Uh, that was like my thing. I'm very, um, very anal when it comes to setting schedules for myself or uh, deadlines and, and dates and stuff like that. I'm very uh, anal. 
is that the right word? I was very, I, I was very self-disciplined in that sense. And yeah. um, I don't know. I just think, I think just the way, way my mind works, I, I tend to have like crackhead energy sometimes. So I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do this. I said six hours. I make a promise to myself. Bam. Like, I'm telling you, bro, I've been through so many. I've been, because of the drums, I've been through so many breakups, man, family, not family, never family. Family's always supported me. But like friendships just torn apart because I committed I committed to something drum yeah. wise, you know, and fuck them. Still worth it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's really cool. So these days, do you have a, um, like a structured practice routine? Do you just like back then try and play as much as possible? How is your, I guess, practice schedule like? These days I like first thing, um, first thing in the morning, I just try to get like an hour or two, you know, um, because throughout the day when I'm recording stuff and, and filming for uh, nowadays i'm filming for this uh ebook i'm trying to release I'm trying to look like little playing examples i get nice. a lot of practice out of that too you know playing with a click and yeah for sure really un uh, really understanding what the hell it is i i'm doing you know yeah that's something i'm learning now like you can you can you can turn any situation into a, a practice session depending on where your mind is right like you could say, okay, I'm going to sit there and record this video. Or you could be like, all right, I'm going to work on my presence, my camera presence. You know, I'm going to use this opportunity of filming to work on my camera presence, for example. That's an yeah. example of finding a situation to practice on. You know? Yeah, for sure. Or like, or like, I'm going to keep redoing this take over and over and over again. I'm like, oh, I realize my, my, my ghost notes aren't that crispy. Let me get them crispy. And then you can find... you find a million different ways to practice that's actually really doing. funny because when when you challenged me to play the that groove mm -hmm. that challenged the fuck out of me bro because i would play <laughs> it and i'd record it and i'd realize that i did something wrong whether it was the accents mm -hmm. whether it was like so there's always one little thing wrong and it took me like two days of recording just to get it <laughs> tight yeah 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 that's, so, that's just how it is man like it's it's yeah depending on how you look at it you can you can use any situation for uh place of practice for place sure that's wise words thanks awesome so on the topic <laughs> of um you know filming youtube videos and stuff do you have a i guess kind of a process to come up with video ideas because some of your ideas are very creative so i, think I was so. wondering if they just came, <laughs> came to you or you had like a brainstorming process what was it, what's it like uh i will say 99.9 percent .9 of the time all of my ideas come from when I'm in the shower really, <laughs> and I'm just like, that might be cool. My, sh you know, shower thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like, oh, that might be kind of cool. And then I will put out the brainstorming, you know, it just starts with an idea, like even a sentence. Yeah. What about a fake drum lesson? Okay. Remember I had the plan. I would record yeah. myself talking into the mic. Like I want to do this, blah, 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 blah. Put it in a video. I think it'll be pretty funny. And then save it for later, come back to it, maybe in the evening, be like, okay, this could probably work. I mean, it's funny, because like, when I played drums, to you saying fuck at like 156 <laughs> beats per minute, that's like, I was so, it's such a random idea that came to me when I was like, yeah. I was sleeping on the sofa, because it was a really hot night, and my room has no cooling. <laughs> mm. um, and it just came to me, I was like, and when I was about to upload it, I was thinking, like, this is the most stupid video I've ever done. I shouldn't upload it. I shouldn't upload it. Yeah. And then I uploaded it and it's my most popular video. <laughs> that's just so, that's funny how it works. Like some videos, I, I, there's some videos where I'm like extremely proud of and put a lot of effort into and they just do shit, you know? And then the videos where I just put the least amount of effort, they just take off. <laughs> it's crazy. Like I think it? my most viewed video is from a, like a, a, a recital clip on my iPhone that I had yeah. on Instagram for a while. I was like, I'm gonna put this on YouTube, <laughs> but it's just, it's just, the way YouTube works, I guess. The way people yeah, work. I guess so. Awesome. People so, go on people go on the internet to look at dumb shit. That is true. I mean, we people all do are hit by entertainment. So yeah, we don't go on the internet to learn. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm trying to put my feet off and, and drink something, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. Laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think you were such a, a breath of fresh air in the whole space because. You know, I'd never watch a drumming video unless it was like a drum cover to, to a song mm. I really liked. I'd never watch a drum video with pure entertainment. <laughs> but like you were the first guy who kind of switched it around. Thanks, man. And but I, I, I still, 
I will admit, I still try to have that underlying message. Like they're, they're like, I try to leave the viewer with at least something they could take and learn yeah. from at least something. Jim, my, my Dixon rep, the guy who signed me to, uh, Dixon, yeah. he's, he, he calls it, um, a spoonful of sugar when you eat a spoonful of sugar after you take the nasty medicine, you know, to, right. Yeah. yeah to uh cover the to cover the bad taste it's just like yeah cool yeah i'm trying to make it entertaining and engaging but still you, i'm not gonna leave you with no information all right unless it's just some bullshit you know yeah. and i like i like shit post i love shit post you know? yeah we all, do. we all do yeah 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 awesome so let's let's forget the youtube journey let's forget the drums okay you the yeah. fuck youtube fuck you what <laughs> So Zach, as a human being, mm -hmm. what would you be doing if you never picked up your drumsticks? If I never picked up the drumsticks, I think I would be very much into uh, sports, boxing. I love boxing. Yeah. Um, I love the sport itself. I, I used to attempt boxing when I was younger, but it doesn't go well with drumming because like you hurt your hand or your wrist. And but um. Yeah, I think I would do some kind of sport, but you know, sports is just like being a musician is like one in a million chance you're going to make it. <laughs> so, yeah. so maybe I'll, I would say, um, an architect. Interesting. I'm, I'm kidding. I have oh. no, I have no idea what the fuck I would be doing. <laughs> there was never another plan for me, bro. <laughs> You should have seen your face just now. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I truly don't know what I would be doing. I mean, I'd probably just go wherever the wind took me. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So apart from boxing, apart from architecture, what are your interests outside of drumming? My interests outside of drumming? Yeah. Um, working out and going to the gym. Oh. That didn't make sense. <laughs> Working out and playing the, playing my game, you know. Uh, nice. And uh, playing playing piano, I guess. <laughs> nice. So, how many pull ups can you do in a single set? How many pull ups? Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I repped out on some pull ups, but the last time I did it, bro, it was like I got I got to uh, I got to twenty clean pull ups, and then I just started, you know struggle with like terrible nice. forms you know yeah 11's my max 11's, 11's my max. max yeah yeah i'm not really a pull-up guy man i'm not i should get into it more i like i like i like iron yeah i'm trying to i'm <laughs> trying to get buff before i turn 19. i turn 19 in march okay yeah i want to be well, built like a greek god by the time i turn 19. oh yeah man well you got it you got it you have a gym membership no, I've just been doing pull-ups. I got some dumbbells at home. Mm, yeah. um, maybe join a gym if I get monetized soon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, find a, bro, I'm telling you, bro, find a gym. Like, like, yeah, home, home workouts are good, but nothing's going to make you work out than the feeling of waking up, putting on gym clothes, you know, get, bringing your headphones, taking your pre-workout, making a jug of water, having your protein ready for you. Like that's all set up. Once you get to the gym, you're like, oh damn, now I actually have to use it. I, I have to use this time that I set yeah. aside for myself and like work out hard. You're like once you're at home, you got all these distractions, you know, yeah. you got your, your, your dog, I don't know, your mom yelling at you. You got the drums. That's a huge distraction, you know, yeah, yeah, it's true. the game, like just find the gym and just go. Nice. Well, I'll take, I'll take that. <laughs> I will try it. So what is a normal day in the life of you then doing your gym, doing your YouTube mm -hmm. practice? How, how does it all go together? Um, let's see. Well, nowadays it's a bit, it's a bit busier than usual. And I've actually, my, my YouTube grind has been suffering because of it. Um, because, uh, I usually wake up, right. I, uh, you know, hit the drums a little bit, warm myself up, wake up, have my energy drink, eat some breakfast, uh, get them the drums again. I, and, and after, after breakfast, I get back on the drums and I start, um, writing for my book. 
not like a book with words. I'm talking about like a drum book. Like I'm doing yeah. like 40 or 50 groups, you know. Nice. Um, and I'm, I'm also working on a, another one. It's like more of like a method educational type of thing, but that's later down the road. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing that. And like relearning notation software has been a, a huge time consumer. Yeah. You know? So I'll do that. And then if I can squeeze in a, a YouTube video or some YouTube filming thing, I definitely would. But I, I, I try to treat it like, um, like a, like, a, like a real job, you know? Yeah, sure. Like I, I, I try to commit like a, a large chunk of my day to doing work. I, I mean, I call, we call it work, but it's really not work. If, if you have yeah. fun with it, you know, we call it work, yeah, but sure. I, I love, I love this shit. I really do. But, um, you know, so my, my chunk just happens to be like nine or 10 to five, like a nine to five. Right. Yeah. And like five, six o'clock comes, I go to the gym. I take a little break from work and go to nice. the gym, hit a thick ass workout, come home awesome. and do some more drum stuff. Like nighttime is, that's when I start to thrive. That's when I thrive, bro. I start that's when the neighbors want to start hearing music. you play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nighttime and the them stars, when them stars start, you know, being shown in the, or, or start appearing in the sky, to something and, and everything, all the planets align. It's just like, yeah. oh, I'm ready to create some stuff now. Yeah. Awesome. And then, um, and then, you know, if I film some stuff that day, the next day would be a day committed to editing. Right. Right. So this is a very important one. If you had to get rid of your crash. Or your ride symbol or your hi hats forever, which one would you choose? I think every drummer would choose the crash. Yeah, I'd choose the crash as well. Because you can crash on the ride. Yeah, exactly. You can ride on the ride. Mm -hmm. But you can't ride on the crash. I mean, you could, but it would sound annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think any drummer would get rid of their hi hats, though. Like, I think that's just. Like, it's crucial. It's crucial. Yeah. I mean, my setup right now, so I got rid of my crash symbol for the crap stack. I got rid of my ride symbol for my China symbol and I've still got the hi-hat. So the hi-hats are yeah. the only normal stuff left. In terms of listening to music, do you listen to any other genres that we haven't really heard you play? Um, I, I'm, I am a slut for like pop punk. Yeah. I, I used to date this emo chick. I gotta watch my language on this channel, bro. <laughs> I used to, used to date this emo chick and she got me real hip to all these bands. I love that shit, man. I, and something about a grown man, like a fully grown man, being able to uh, sing like a girl is just so appealing to me. It's like, come, oh, please don't leave. You know, I just, I love that shit. I don't know why. I don't nice. know why. Yeah, nice. but on the, other, on the other side of that, I mean, outside jazz and, and, and fusion and stuff like that, I also really like uh, Juice World, Trippy Red, like a lot of these hot rappers now. That's know? interesting. Yeah, man, I, I listen to it all. Everything pretty much except for like folk. I'm not really into folk. I try to, because I'm dating this country chick for a minute. For a minute, but I'm not really. I can't. I'm not. I'm just not into it. All right, this is the. <laughs> I think this is the final question, and it's. I've been saving this one because it's um. It's a very important one. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. What is your favorite food? Favorite food? Yeah. A big old thick steak. Big nice. old thick ass piece of steak. Big old piece of steak is my favorite food of all time. What about you? Wait, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. All right, go and guess, guess. I'm going to say you're like a pizza guy. I mean, it is one of my favorites. I can't pinpoint one. Mm. I like loads of mm. things. I like pizza. I like pasta. I like mm. sushi. Okay. Okay. Very like scrambled eggs sushi, in the morning. Sushi. Scrambled eggs. Who put, who chooses scrambled eggs as their favorite food? Grow up. This the sushi <laughs> caught me off guard though. I'll admit, I didn't know you. Sushi, sushi is good. I don't fuck with sushi. I don't, I don't. don't do raw. I don't do raw stuff. I don't do fish in general. But like sushi being raw, that 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 scares me. The thing is, you can get different kinds. You can get like <laughs> different kind of sushi. It's like a know. whole world of itself. Yeah, I mean, enjoy your world. I mean, I'll stay out. <laughs> Fair enough. That's more for me. Anyway, yeah, I think that concludes the interview. I have one okay. final request. Yeah. This is you at the drum set. Do you mind playing some really mind blowing chops? I mean, I don't know about mind blowing, but, but, uh, something, 
I was just trying to work out, like... <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm just going to play. I'm not going to say anything. I, I just, I'll just try to play something, I guess. Okay. Got me on the spot here, bro. Sorry, bro. You want me to do it? Let me do it. Let me do this type of thing. Please excuse the, the mess in this room. My dog ripped a toy. Okay. Okay. up man <laughs> awesome that was awesome well thank you so much for playing that for me and you know thank you so much for being in the video dude thanks for having me on talking drums with adam awesome i mean yeah man obviously you're and i gotta say you're my favorite drumming youtuber you're my favorite <laughs> thanks, YouTuber. Dude. thanks and, you man know, you're one of my wow. favorite drummers as well and i really appreciate how you know i'm such a small guy and you know who i am and you're happy to help out yeah, yeah i appreciate it big time yeah, man, I appreciate you. You got it, man. I, I told you when we first met or when we first connected yeah. or Instagram, right? Yeah. Or YouTube. They're like, I, your stuff is real fun. You know, it's like a breath of fresh air, like we were talking about. And I like it. I respect it. Subscribe to Adam, y'all. He's on the come up. He's on the come up. Yeah. Also, buy a new computer. <laughs> oh, the amount of times I've had to refresh it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's